Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'd like to call to order a meeting of the Summer Flounder Scup and Black Sea Bass Management Board. My name is Michael Luisi, and I am, I've been passed the baton from uh, Dr. Pierce to serve as your chairman for the next couple years, for which the clock has already started ticking. Uh, we set the alarm this morning on two years from now, so. Uh, so thank you, and we have a few, we have a lot of different items on the agenda today, um, starting with consent of the approval. Does anyone have any, I'm sorry, approval of the agenda. Does anyone have any changes to the agenda? Okay, seeing none, it's approved by consent. Um, regarding the proceedings from the November 2015 meeting, are there any edits, additions, or changes to the proceedings? Okay, seeing none, those will be um, approved by consent. We didn't have anyone sign up for public comment, but does anyone in the audience uh, wish to speak regarding anything that is not on this current agenda? Okay, seeing no one from the audience, we will have um, discussion today on final action that will need to be taken for um, the draft addendum for summer flounder and black sea bass. So at that time, there will be an opportunity for the public to provide comment after we have a motion that's debated by the, by the board. Okay. So with that, I will go ahead and turn the mic over to Kirby, who is going to discuss the review of the 2016 Black Sea Bass commercial quotas. Kirby. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I'll go through this fairly quickly. Um, back in uh, October of 2015, the board uh, revised the Black Sea Bass commercial quota uh, to 2.71 million pounds. Uh, in December of 2015, NOAA released the final rule on the 2016 commercial quota for summer flounder scup and black sea bass. At that point, um, through reconciliation between state data and data reported through CEFIS, um, we finalized 2014 landings and NOAA determined that there was an overage of about 8,896 uh, pounds. In December or in January of this year, the board received a memo on revised 2016 state quotas for black sea bass and 2016 summer period state quotas for scup. So up here on the slide, we have what the final 2014 black sea bass landings are by state and what the coastwide overage is. Um, if any states are interested in how this played out relative to what was presented in October, I'm happy to go over that. And then after accounting for this overage, coastwide overage, those states that were over their state-specific quota took a reduction even with the um, increase in the coastwide quota. So in that memo, you have the final 20, or at least the, the initial 2016 um, black sea bass state by state quotas and I say initial because uh, depending on transfers throughout the season that that number may change. So with that if there's any questions on the black sea bass state quotas for 2016 I'm happy to, to answer them now. Thanks. Thank you Kirby. Uh, any questions for Kirby on the presentation? Okay seeing none. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the next item on the agenda. So the next item, there's a, we have a series of presentations. Um, Kirby's going to present some information uh, regarding the draft, a draft addendum 27. Uh, John Maniscalco is here to, re to report out on the TC's findings, and we also have Mark, um, who will be providing us some comments on the Law Enforcement Committee. So what I thought we would do since these issues, while each and every one of them be, is new in some way, these are, you know, the issues in this addendum are, are things that we've had a lot of debate over, on over the last few years uh, regarding regional management, regarding black sea bass overages and the necessary reductions that come as a result of that. Um, so we'll step, we'll kind of step through the presentations and I'll try to find a time in there when I think we can get some questions on, on the addendum. and. Uh, We'll get through all of the presentations before we uh, would consider 
motions uh, to move the addendum along and finalize the addendum as needed today. Okay, so with that, uh, Kirby's going to review the options in addendum 27. Kirby. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. So as uh, Mike walked us through, I'm going to go through the addendum first, just so everyone's familiar with what the options are and what the public saw. I'll go through that fairly quickly, and then I'm going to touch on what the public comment summary was. First, the public hearings, and then the written comments. After that, um, we will have a, I'll, I'll go through briefly what the advisory panel report was, and then John will um, walk through the technical committee's comments on the draft addendum specific to Summer Flounder. Um, after that, Mark will, will give the law enforcement committee report. So the draft addendum was approved for public comment at the joint ASMFC uh, Mid-Atlantic Council meeting in December 2015. It proposed regional management options for summer flounder and black sea bass recreational fisheries in 2016 and 2017. And the public comment period closed on January 21st, 2016. So the draft addendum 27 seeks to address concerns over the equitable access to summer flounder recreational fishery along the coast. Um, in previous years, prior to 2014, state-by-state -state harvest targets were becoming viewed as increasingly problematic because of the need to take reductions when states went over their harvest allocation, as well as states that were under would have liberalizations, which caused big discrepancies on a state-by-state -state basis on what management measures were. In addition to that, fishery uh, performance along the coast has also varied a lot uh, during the last 20 years. In recent years, we've been trying to address how that uh, has been uh, changing over time. So in the, in the draft addendum on page 22 and tw through 26, there's in that appendix a, a breakdown of how uh, the states score out, so to speak, in terms of a couple of different metrics, retention rates, uh, nearest neighbor management measures, uh, trips that are, har that are targeting uh, summer flounder, and um, some some interesting things that uh, the document puts out is that the retention rates are highest in states of Virginia, Delaware, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts, and lowest in the states of New York, New Jersey, and Maryland. Uh, interest or avidity in relation to successful trips has also varied across the coast as well. Trips targeting summer flounder are lowest in the states of Massachusetts, but highest in the states of New York and New Jersey. And the highest success rate for targeted trips has been in the states of Massachusetts. In recent years, uh, New Jersey has had the, the lowest score when you compare these metrics across the states and across the coast. So the draft addendum 27 outlines a kind of a a step approach to make a decision for 2016 and 2017. There's first option one that lists either to go with a coastwide set of management measures or conservation equivalency. Under conservation equivalency, there's the ability to have state-by-state -state harvest targets, which were used, as I said, from 2001 until 2013. The other option uh, or the other route is to have adaptive regional management. That was what was used the last two years. Sub-option 2A has the regional alignment for what was in place in 2014 and 2015. Choosing that option would continue that regional alignment. Sub-option 2B allows for New Jersey to split its regulations east and west of the Colregs line in Delaware Bay. This information again is on page 8 and 9 of the draft addendum. So under option 1, there's a breakdown of what the state-by-state state harvest targets would have been in 2015 um, and what they will be in 2016 if that option is, is chosen. It also has a breakdown on what the state-by-state state harvest estimates are through wave five. And what you can see is that a number of states would have been over their state harvest target and therefore would need to take a reduction in 2016. Option two, as I mentioned before, is adaptive regional management that's been in place the last two years. Within or under this option, states implement the same bag and size limit uh, within a region. The season start and end dates may vary, but the number of days within the season must stay the same among the states in a region. And the, the effort by the technical committee is to have the proposed measures within a region to be similar to the previous year's regulations, so there isn't huge swings year to year on what 
the management measures are. It's important to note that this is not intended to implement new state allocations, nor is it intended to set a precedent for state allocations but, uh, to, based on harvest. And the technical committee, as I said, would, would work to develop regional measures that the board would review and approve. Um, the document contains what the regional management measures would be for the states in the two regional alignment setups for 2016. So the first regional management option, option 2A, has a breakdown of what the management measures were in 2014, 2015, and is proposed for 2016 in the draft addendum. Option 2B, uh, as I mentioned before, draws a line in the Delaware Bay along the Coal Regs line. So west of that, New Jersey would have a different set of management measures in the Delaware Bay relative to Delaware. In previous years, there's been a two inch difference in the minimum size. This regional alignment would make a one inch difference. So New Jersey would effectively come down from 18 inches to 17 inches. For possession limit, they would also come down to four fish instead of five fish for the rest of New Jersey and a season length of 128 days, which would mirror the rest of the state of New Jersey. The difference is that once you get east of the Coal Regs line, the ocean side of New Jersey is held to the regional management measures that were in place the last two years and is consistent with New York and Connecticut. So east of the Coal Regs line, New Jersey's measures are 18 inch size limit, five fish possession limit, and 128 day season. It's important to understand that by the way that regional alignment and regions that can be formed under conservation equivalency stipulates that a state has to have the same management measures as the other states within a region because no other states in the northern region that had been in place the last two years, Connecticut, New York, and New Jersey, are looking to offer a similar area specific set of management measures, New Jersey is going to become its own region under this context while setting its measures similar to the other states in the, the former region. So on page 28 and 29 in the draft addendum, there's a decision tree to help the board walk through the options that are included in the document. It's important also for the board to, to keep in mind that conservation equivalency was approved by the board in December of 2015. So that first step has already been taken. The next step down is to choose between either state by state or regional management. And as I just walked through, there's two different options for regional management under the adaptive regional management option. So for summer flounder, there are four options for a time frame. The first one would make it so that it's only in place for 2016. Option two would have, will give the board the ability to extend it another year through 2017. Option three would have, would give the board the ability to extend it up to two years, so up through 2018. And then option four would create a no sunset, so the addendum would continue in perpetuity until a new addendum that offered different regional management alignment uh, was developed. So if unless there was an interest to change the regional alignment in a year or two years, it, this would stay in place until um, such a uh, document was developed. And this is included on page 13. So I'm going to go through the Black Sea Bass part of the document fairly quickly. The statement of the problem is similar to what was outlined for summer flounder. Um, regional management for the recreational fishery has been in place since 2011. It was crafted to alleviate the issue that coastwide set of measures was having on different states throughout the management unit. The draft addendum offers options for continuing the regional management approach that's been used from 2012 to 2015. So in the document, uh, there's two options put forward. The first is to go with the FMP status quo, which would be a, a coast-wide set of management measures. 
the other option is to continue the ad hoc regional management approach where the states of Massachusetts through New Jersey craft measures to um, to the best needs of their state's interests um, and to account for harvest that primarily takes place in their state waters. The states of Delaware South through North Carolina north of Hatteras would set their measures more consistently with the federal measures. So I outlined a little bit more what option two has in terms of the ad hoc regions. Um, it's important to note in the document, it, it lays out what the reduction is set for in 2016 um, based on wave five data, preliminary wave five data, uh, the northern states uh, would need to take the reduction of about 23 percent. Um, John's going to go through a little bit more on the Black Sea Bass proposals on how that breaks down and why the northern states would, would likely be taking that reduction. Similar to summer flounder, there is a four option approach for the time frame first one, no extension beyond 2016. Option two would allow for the extension through 2017. Option three through 2018. And option four would create a no sunset clause. So that's the draft addendum. I don't, unless there's any questions on the draft addendum, I'll continue on to the public comment summary. So public hearings were held in um, January of 2016 in the states of Virginia through Massachusetts. 105 people attended across seven states. Uh, commissioners were in attendance for a number of those public hearings. Written uh, comments were submitted and a total of 52 comments were submitted by email or by fax and nine groups and organizations provided comments. Um, a breakdown of how the public comment summary is is included in the supplemental materials. We have hard copies in the back of the room if anybody needs um, one of those. So in terms of the public hearing summary for Summer Flounder, support was split uh, between four states for options 2A, the regional management status quo, and option 2B, New Jersey, Delaware Bay region. There was no clear majority in the other uh, three states of New York, Virginia, Massachusetts. That's the breakdown on the state by state comparison of public hearings. In terms of total number of people at public hearings, um, the total number that were in favor of option 2B, the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region was 42 compared to uh, approximately 10 um, people who were in support of the regional management status quo. And again, this is a breakdown on people who gave us uh, confirmation or affirmation that they were in favor of one of the options that was included in the draft addendum. We received a number of com public comments that uh, didn't pertain to options that were in the draft addendum, and I'll go through those a little bit. So reasons that were cited in support of option 2B um, were concerns over the different size limits in the Delaware Bay and the economic impact that has had on uh, southern New Jersey fishermen, particularly in concern over um, trips that they're losing to their southern um, neighbor, Delaware, in terms of charter boats. Uh, the other concerns that were raised were over different management measures um, that have been had on the shared water body as well as the fact that while the management measures have been different, they are fishing on the same size fish uh, in these two states. The preferred timetable that uh, was indicated through public hearings under this option was option one just for 2016. Um, as a majority of these uh, comments came from the New Jersey uh, public hearing, I just want to make a note that the request or the preference stated from that was a return to state-by-state -state conservation equivalency in 2017 for a majority of those who were in favor of option 2B. So there were a few comments that, uh, in support of option 2A. The main reasons that were given were that regional managed measures have worked in the past two years, Con uh, concern expressed over New Jersey becoming its own region, and concern over the number of regions and management measures under option 2B. Um, again, this is 
that what they're saying here is that there would be six regions as opposed to five, which is starting to mirror the number of states or close to the number of states in the management unit, which is getting closer to uh, what the breakdown was under state by state harvest targets. The preferred time frame option varied along the coast when it came to support of the status quo, uh, but they were all for multiple years, so beyond 2016, either options two, three, or four. For black sea bass, there were few comments in support of options that were in the draft addendum. Uh, 13 were in support of option two, the continuing the ad hoc regional approach. Uh, reasons cited were that it's worked well the past two years and that interest in um, maintaining the separate management measures for the southern states um, and those that the northern states craft. And the preferred time frame that was uh, indicated was uh, for multi or for either options one, just for 2016, or for option two, 2016 and 2017. Uh, but the majority of the comments we, we received were, were concerns over the mismatch and what uh, anglers are observing in terms of the abundance out on the water uh, and the current harvest limits. And it was noted during the New Jersey public hearing um, the state is interested or, can, or should be considering going out of compliance. In terms of written comment summary, uh, the majority of comments received on Summer Flounder did not specify an option in the draft addendum. Many were requesting a 17-inch size limit for southern New Jersey fishermen that extended north beyond the Delaware Bay uh, to varying degrees. Some outlined it as to the extent of um, the Little Egg Inlet. Uh, others extended it further north, um, and reasons cited were dip similar to those given in public hearings, concern over the different size limit in the Delaware Bay and concern um, over different management measures um, and shared water bodies. And the preferred timetable that was a uh, majority of those that, that were in favor of an option in the addendum was for uh, just 2016. There were also a few comments in favor of um, Option two, I'm sorry, that's supposed to say option two A, regional management status quo. Um, reasons cited as were similar to those in the public hearing uh, that regional management has worked over the last two years, concern about New Jersey becoming its own region, and preferred uh, timetable varied depending on the state in which the public hearing or the public comment came from. For black sea bass, uh, the majority did not specify an option in the draft addendum. The overwhelming um, majority of the written comments we received uh, took issue with the 23% reduction and recommended it not be implemented in 2016. Um, of written comments received, only three were in favor of continuing the ad hoc regional approach with reasons cited primarily that it has uh, worked well the past two years. Um, we held a advisory panel call um, earlier last week to go over the options in the draft addendum. Six were in favor of option 2B, the Delaware Bay option, um, with reasons cited that were similar to both the written comments and public hearing comments. Um, only two were in support of option 2A, which was regional management status quo. Six of the, um, of the AP members were in favor of continuing option 2B, the ad hoc regional management, um, with a preference for uh, ad hoc regional approaches versus coastwide set of measures. So that's a summary of what the public uh, comment or was. I'll take any questions if folks have them at this point. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Kirby. At this time, um, I'd like to direct questions to Kirby if you can try to keep your, your thoughts to questions uh, rather than comments on the actions in the addendum. And I'll start with Bob. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Kirby, I just want to make sure that I'm clear on uh, the actions taken by the board to date with regard to Summer Flounder 2016 reconciled with the decisions that are before the board today. My understanding is, my recollection is, that the board, and you noted this, did agree to adopt conservation equivalency for 2016. In addition, and that was at the joint meeting in December, in addition at our board meeting in November, as I remember, 
the board agreed to extend the provisions of addendum 26 uh, regional management for 2016 as well so in a sense those two issues have already been addressed by the and decided upon by the board now I think the key caveat is that addendum 27 which sort of primarily addresses the issue of New Jersey's request to be a region by themselves also includes extended timelines beyond 2016 and is it for that reason that we're back to looking at conservation equivalency and regional management again having already essentially decided them at our last two meetings if you follow my question thank you yeah you're correct um, in everything and I just want to make sure it's clear that the draft addendum offers multiple time frames for when uh, regional management could be extended out beyond 2016 without that addendum or if the addendum is not approved today for 2016 summer flounder regional management just for 2016 is an option that's available yeah. and Bob I can add to that I'm thinking back to our meeting in November there was a concern that if we initiate an addendum and it doesn't become finalized due to the um, due to the change in the regional approach that we would find ourselves having to revert back to straight conservation equivalency which is we almost established the we almost put a backstop to how far back we'd fall if this addendum today does not become final if it's voted down we, we would revert to the current status quo which is the regions that we're currently in does that help clarify and I was I was a little con concerned but confused a little bit too as to why in the, in the in this draft it goes back into all it allows for the board and to, to go back and revisit all of that and the board certainly can if it if the board wants to revisit each one of those options and and vote for coastwide measures or change something you know the board can do that it would require a two-thirds vote since we've already we've already voted on those options to this point and maybe maybe we won't have to do this too many more times down the road but if we have to in the future perhaps that could be that could be clarified um, if we end up taking action with the council um, and by ourselves you know as a board uh, leading up to this we it should be made sure that it's clear so the public isn't confused because I think in some some cases that could confuse the public Kirby just one other follow-up so that it's clear the addendum also has options for black sea bass um, a deviation from what the FMP status quo is so without the addendum for black sea bass coastwide management measures would be in place for 2016 so um, when we get to the board's preference on what options to go forward with and we'll handle it in two ways summer flounder and black sea bass but understand that without the addendum we also uh, would be coastwide measures for 2016 thanks Kirby um, David Simpson yeah thanks mr. chair um, was John gonna speak to the the alternatives for summer flounder I'll, I'll hold my question on thing yeah, John's going to go over the technical committee's uh, review of the draft addendum 27. Okay, thanks. Uh, Emerson Hasbrook. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Kirby, thank you for your presentation. I have two questions. Um, the first is, can somebody direct me to, to where in the document um, it's, it specifically says that if we go with the New Jersey Delaware Bay option, that um, coastal New Jersey outside of Delaware Bay will in fact um, correlate um, and, and, and have its regulations the same as New York and Connecticut. That, that's one question. Yeah, so in the draft addendum, um, it, it says on page 12, New Jersey Delaware Bay option will have a similar size limit as Delaware and the same possession limit as Delaware in the same season as the rest of New Jersey north of Delaware Bay. And then in the at, um, table, it lists what those measures are explicitly. Thank you. And my second question, um, maybe 
a little premature depending on what John's presentation is. Um, so I'll ask the question, and, and if I need to ask it after John's presentation, I will. I recall that there was some discussion about how the, uh, the Delaware Bay option with New Jersey was going to require an additional 30,000 more or less fish to be able to accommodate that. Should I ask that, follow up that question now, or should I wait till John's discussion? Because I'm not sure what John's going to cover. Yeah, so John's going to go over what the number of fish that the technical committee has considered in terms of the different regional breakdowns uh, relative to the harvest limit. Okay, thanks, Kirby. Um, Pat Augustine. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, excellent report, Kirby. A uh, question would be that um, if we do it through 2018, uh, it, and I should know this answer, but I don't, um, if, in fact, the harvest report that comes in at the end of 2016 is off the wall, completely out of whack uh, because of this change that we make in Delaware Bay. Does the document allow us to move forward and quickly change that back, or we cast in concrete through 2017, 18? I should know the answer, but I don't. Can you repeat the question? I, I was getting a little confused. Are you, for, and specify, are you talking about summer flounder? Okay. If on summer flounder, if we, in fact, um, separate the Delaware Bay between the, the two sections or regions, if you will, uh, with an inch difference or whatever it is, if at the end of the harvest year and you do your preliminary reporting and we find out that one section or the other has significantly overpassed our quota, surpassed it by some outrageous amount, uh, are we in a position to, to um, uh, go ahead and reset that? Who will be penalized? Will it be both regions? Um, I need a little clarification on it because I personally am supportive of, of giving this a shot. I'm more concerned that if we go down this road and if it, we run amok for some reason, what do we do to recoup it and who pays to balance it? I don't know if you can help me with that, Curry. Yeah, Pat, I, th I can try to speak to that. And you brought up the point that I was planning to discuss briefly with the board um, during, during, um, at the end of the meeting. Um, regarding new business, because it's your your concern is it should be on all of our minds. Uh, it's something that's been brought up a number of times over the years that we have been manipulating and modifying this regional management approach. And so the question, how as I understand it, is if we exceed the recreational harvest limit in 2016, or it's just, it's projected that we're going to exceed that limit. Um, we don't have a real mechanism in place in order to deal with that overage regarding who, who's responsible or who pays back, because the regions aren't, while they have a theoretical um, allocation that the, each region kind of carries along with itself from the 1998 allocations with the help from other states that provided extra cap space for the fish sharing concept that we used, there really is nothing to fall back to to determine who pays back overages and who has to change their regulations to to fix that and you know my thought moving away from today's meeting was you know let's put this on the agenda to begin that that discussion in may um, somewhat of a um, an accountability amendment on how we handle regional management in the future so I, I don't have the answer what i what i can tell you is if we do if we do vote to move to have this in place for a couple years. And along the way, we see it going off the rails. I believe that we could, another addendum could be initiated in that event, you know. And we won't have to wait until 2018 to do something. We'll have some flexibility to, to initiate something new. By establishing 2018, let's, for instance, we wouldn't have to, if, if this is sounding familiar to some of you, this is, a, this is, a, this is something we've done every year now for for two, three years, we would just hold off on having to make this, this, have this conversation unless there is something new that we want to consider. Does that help answer your question? Yeah, it sure does. And you did alert the whole board. And that was my concern. And maybe only a few of us were paying attention to it. And we're just going to say, well, let it happen. Unfortunately, when it does happen, then we're going to have to scurry. And uh, I hope you bring that up for me. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Pat. Rob O'Reilly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I promise to stay out of that for right now. But uh, I do have some questions, and 
I'm wondering, I, I remember that the striped bass addendum four drew about 100, 101 participants to public hearings. And Kirby, you may have said in total how many attended these meetings, but do you happen to have a rough estimate? For the coast, or for, for the coast, it was 100, I believe it was 105. I had it on my, um, okay. one of my earlier slides. Thank you. So I, I guess my question is, um, did, I know I was at one public hearing, but did, did everyone understand this question about one year, two years, three years, no sunset as to where it was coming from? Um, it is a bit unusual, and I think that I understand it, and I'm sure others around the table understand why, um, but did the public have any questions as to why this was posed for addendum 27? I'm not aware of the public uh, requesting additional information on how the time frame options came up. Um, I attended one public hearing in person and other staff attended the others. Um, there, there weren't specific questions as to why multiple time frames were being offered um, that I'm aware of. Follow up, Rob. Very small. Um, so. The, we know about adaptive management, and we have a very small segment of the public who's attending these meetings. And um, would there be a good way to at least convey the information that whatever is chosen in terms of the time frame for Addendum 27 measures that the public will understand there's adaptive management? Um, already had a couple of comments about what happens if things don't work out. And certainly um, that's something that the public should know about as well, that there's adaptive management there. And even if there's a three year or a sunset, um, that doesn't mean that these issues don't come back. And, I, and I'm just wondering, is that something that um, staff thinks it would be easy to convey somehow when this information, these decisions come out uh, later on? Yeah, so um, it's included earlier on in the document, but I'll just reiterate it that, you know, each year the technical committee has to evaluate how the coastwide harvest is, is proceeding relative to the harvest limit. And in doing so, uh, have to make adjustments if there's the anticipation that the following year the harvest is going to go over the harvest limit. So management measures have to be uh, reevaluated every year. Um, under option 2B, it kind of locks in how New Jersey would set its measures relative to its neighbors, um, but the other option, regional management status quo, doesn't specify what the year-to-year -year regional management measures are, per se. So under both, you kind of have the ability to change every year as needed, um, but we can make sure that that's more explicit in terms of what the management measures are. Okay. Um, Brandon. Love Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Just to follow up on your point, I wholeheartedly agree that we need to discuss um, how we deal with, you know, overages and how penalties occur in the future. But I just want to point out that regardless of what we do today, if we decide to put New Jersey in its own region for Delaware Bay or we stay at status quo, that discussion needs to be had um, because that never, we never really kind of fully fleshed that out in terms of how we would deal with overages, even under the current structure. Thanks. You're correct, and before we uh, adjourn today, I'm going to—I'll get the, the board to to weigh in on on you know possible ways that we can consider moving forward with that. Okay, so that's all the uh, Tom Foti. Okay. Yeah, um, I, there was more than 104 people at the striped bass hearings, Rob. I think yeah, I had 150 in New Jersey alone. That's, that's a, so I kind of—I don't know where that number came from. I so saw. I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of people. If you look at the doc, you look, I actually did count heads throughout here. And if it wasn't for Massachusetts and New Jersey, we would only have 25 people at all the other hearings. So that's with 100 and some of flounder. But on striped bass, we had a lot more than, <laughs> than, uh, than 100 at all the hearings. We had 150 in New Jersey. Um, there's also nothing in the document that what's happened this year to New Jersey. I mean, one of the reasons we don't really have to take as drastic a reduction could pretty much stay status quo, because New Jersey was actually under 40 percent 
of what we have, we could have harvested under the other rules and or what we could have supposed to have harvested so by us basically harvesting way under what we should have or we could have we basically about helped everybody out and that's you know there's no way of rewarding that in the old days we at least could have basically states we could have actually got, gotten relaxed our regulations instead of going the other direction but that's not possible under regionalization we don't do it one way or the other we don't penalize so it's one of the things to look at if you're going to reward or penalize somebody for doing that um you know so that's what i'm looking at again as but we also know that we were 40 percent under this year in 2013 when we had no boats in the water and in one wave when we had no boats in the water all the marinas were still closed because of sandy in june and july we went over quota we almost doubled the quota we caught or triple the quarter we caught the year before. So we know that this is, you know, I might as well get a dice and throw it sometimes when we look at MERS figures. So we know that next year we could be in the same spot that somebody else is, and that's why we helped each other along the way. The South did it. Even when we were conservation equivalency, helped bail us out a couple of times in the Northeast region. Okay, thanks, Tom. Nicola Mazur. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A uh, quick question for staff about some language on page 14 of the document. Um, the guidance to states about black sea bass regulations um, puts a threshold at 15% for a PSC to set mode or area specific uh, measures. And my recollection was that that 15% value is a hangover from MRFs. So I'm wondering if that should be updated for this document um, in terms of the state's setting uh, or their proposals that we're going to look at as part of this meeting today. Thanks. Kirby. You are correct that um, that is a, a consideration that was put forward by the technical committee. I don't think we have a new PSC for motor area for um, MREP specific. So that's also something that would need to be um, specified. Um, but uh, th it is a point that the technical committee has uh, brought to the board's attention before. Okay, at this time, um, I'm going to turn to John to provide us a report on the technical aspects of the addendum. And then we'll have the Law, Com Law Enforcement Committee report uh, and then move on to taking up the action items in the addendum. Thanks. John? Thank you. So, uh, and a lot of this has already been covered, but this is just a quick look at harvest from 2013 through 2015. Um, Certainly in 2014 and 2015, uh, same regulations were in place. 2013 was somewhat different. Uh, in the far right column, you can see a comparison from 2015 to 2014. That's essentially a ratio of harvest. Uh, in general, there was a decline in most states along the coast. Um, New York stayed essentially the same. Virginia increased slightly. All other, all other states decreased, but most significantly, in that mid-Atlantic region with uh, New Jersey being 60% uh, lower than they did the previous year with the same regulations. So there's been some concern about the magnitude of harvest coming out of Delaware Bay, so the TC wanted to clarify that. Um, 2015 Delaware Bay harvest was about 15,000 fish. With the proposed liberalization of regulations in Delaware Bay, New Jersey, only uh, 17 inches. So the size limit decreases by one inch to 17 inches. The possession limit decreases by one fish to four fish. 128 days remains the same. That liberalizes harvest in Delaware Bay, New Jersey by 35%, which is equivalent to approximately 5,500 fish uh, going by 2015 harvest numbers. So as noted, uh, New Jersey's 2015 harvest was uh, particularly low. So if you look at Delaware Bay harvest uh, in a year like 2012 or 2014, where it's closer to 1, 1 1.2 million, uh, Delaware Bay harvest is approximately 85,000 fish. So if, if you take that same 35% liberalization, you're looking at approximately 30,000 fish. Um, so if you take the 30,000 fish, um, that's relative to 1.87 million fish in the 2016 RHL. So even if New Jersey does harvest at a, we'll say, a no, more normal rate, um, the impact from the Delaware Bay liberalization is likely to be small, at least judging by the previous four years of harvest. So 
So the current projection for 2016 based upon re regional options 2A and 2B of both approximately 1.6 million fish. Uh, the 2016 RHL is 1.87 million fish. So these options project an under harvest of the 2016 RHL by over 200,000 fish. Um, but the TC wishes to remind the board that under the same or essentially the same exact regulations in 2014, uh, the coast harvested 2.46 million fish. Um, the RHL will drop again in 2017 by an additional 2.6 percent according to the annual specs. Uh, continued depressed recreational harvest um, which certainly corroborate the most recent assessment update findings and that we can look forward to another assessment update this summer. Whoop, and I just... So finally the technical committee wanted to address um, a proposal from uh, Rhode Island Charter Captains Cooperative. Uh, you, we've seen something similar before. This is kind of a limited entry group of charter vessels that's seeking an allotment of summer flounder to better serve their customers and their business. Um, what they're doing is asking for a number of fish so they can uh, seek flexibility with regards to size limit while um, harvesting under the uh, per angler possession limit. They wish to reduce discards and provide a more stable business environment. Um, Another aspect of this program is higher quality catch reporting and monitoring, um, which the technical committee representative from Rhode Island did say was the, for him, the best part of this program. Um, in 2013, 2014, they had a pilot program that utilized RSA fish. RSA has been suspended, and uh, a similar program request failed to gain board support in 2015. Um, technical, com technical committee concerns uh, with this program uh, has to do with the biasing of MRIP data and confounding of um, the intercept data. Uh, so this would be a mode split within, so charter, charter vessels within um, Rhode Island would be fishing under different sets of regulations. Uh, so this is problematic and if you're looking at the intercept data it would be um, next to impossible to separate out uh, which vessels were fishing under the um, cooperative and which vessels were fishing under uh, regulations in place for the rest of Rhode Island. Uh, another aspect of this that is problematic is, uh, as been already been noted, uh, each region or state has a projection or expectation of harvest for the for the coming year. Um, but no state has been held to that number. It's been kind of fluid, and as long as we've uh, remained underneath the RHL, uh, no state has been held accountable or been forced to change their measures. Um, so the question with a cooperative like this is where do those fish come from and uh, who's held accountable and, and what happens if the RHL is exceeded. Um, and finally, just one more note, the, the TC uh, appreciates the uh, stability in measures. It gives us uh, data to work with, having three years of um, similar measures. Um, provide some idea of how much variability we can expect from, you know, when stock size and or MRIP um, changes what's harvested, being harvested in states. And that is all I have for now. Okay, thanks, John. Um, before we take questions, let's go ahead and get the Law Enforcement Committee report. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Bob, did you have something? Are we ready for the, the Law Enforcement Committee report? Mark, are you ready for that? We'll finish up the presentations, um, get questions for uh, Mark and John, Kirby and I, and then move forward with uh, consideration of the options. Mark. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the <clears throat> Law, Law Enforcement Committee uh, was able to meet during our conference call to discuss this addendum on January 7th. There were 18 enforcement uh, members of the committee uh, participating. And before I get into specifics on summer flounder or black sea bass, a uh, general note uh, for both species regarding the timing, uh, specifically in discussing this issue, focusing on the conservation equivalency and the regional adaptive measures, um, regional management measures, um, the, the law enforcement committee 
would certainly prefer that time frames be extended as long as possible. This kind of a, uh, is kind of a, a general consistency um, and stability issue that you we've referenced in our enforceability guidelines that um, uh, the possibilities of changing from year to year and how boundaries are drawn or, or where regions are, are, are laid out uh, creates uh, some real uncertainty and some problems for law enforcement. So that's, that's the reason they, they just express that desire to try to extend those, those uh, decision-making processes out as far as possible. With regard to summer flounder, um, the LEC really focused its review on the new option for a <clears throat> region for New Jersey and the Delaware Bay. And um, I'll say right off the bat, we didn't have consensus, so we'll skip right to the bottom, uh, bottom bullet on this one. <clears throat> but part of the reason there's not a consensus is because obviously the members recognize there was an intent to try to provide more consistency within Delaware Bay um, and recognizing the importance of that. But this was a case where there was a consistency trade-off, um, in particular discussing uh, how this might affect enforcement in the southern part of New Jersey, uh, where you have waterways and, and water bodies that can connect uh, the ocean side to the bay side of Delaware Bay. Um, it was pointed out that this is likely to create a lot, a lot of enforcement difficulty uh, from, from the southern end of New Jersey up towards those northern areas where you may have more of, a, of the ocean uh, regulations in place. Uh, just as an aside, uh, the comment was made about previous problems with differing recreational regulations in some of the parks in New Jersey as opposed to regular statewide regulations. And at a local and regional level, how difficult these things can become for enforcement officers. So in, you know, we may be thinking in terms of big, broad ge geographical areas, but what it comes down to in this case is a, a problem for enforcement in southern New Jersey. On the other hand, um, I don't think there was a significant concern raised about um, how this might play out for the state of Del D Delaware. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and so therefore, again, um, we don't really have a consensus. But going back to our enforceability guidelines, um, you know, this, the issue of adaptive regional measures and trying to move to conservation equivalency, recognizing as we do how important this may be to, to you as a commission, um, the broader you can have consistency in regulations, especially in recreational regulations, um, the better off it is for, for, from a law enforcement perspective. So um, this is a situation where we recognize that it's difficult to get to that happy place. But, uh, but, but again, we go back to our enforceability guidelines in seeking out the broadest possible regions uh, or areas for coastwide regulations, especially where you have a lot of contiguous jurisdictional boundaries. For black sea bass, um, we support the continuation of the ad hoc measures that were in place. Um, Again, going back to our, our general guidelines of strongly recommending continuing efforts to maximize regional consistency to the broadest extent possible. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Questions for John or Mark? John Clark. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mark, on the, uh, for the summer flounder, I noticed it said there was uh, not consensus among the enforcement agents. I was just curious, um, because the subject came up at our hearing, how confident are the, is New Jersey enforcement that they could properly enforce the two different size limits around Cape May? I believe that, that the answer to that, if they were here and able to do that, I'm trying, I, I don't want to speak too much for the members of the committee, but I think the answer would be they would do everything possible to enforce the regulations that they're presented with. <clears throat> but the descriptions of inland waterways, and I'm not that familiar with that part of southern New Jersey, obviously, but that the, the, the combination of access to both the ocean side and the Delaware Bay side and the difference in regulations and the movement of vessels in and out of those areas will create a lot of challenges um, for enforcement officers. Rob O'Reilly. Thank you for the reports. 
and uh, I had a question about the data that John presented and possibly this will be talked about a little bit later um, but our chairman early on said we will look at situations or at least get a dialogue started how to look at situations when there's a RHL exceedance which is beyond what was in 2014 which was 6% but was covered by the 2015 RHL so there was essentially no payback um, one thing that might be good and John maybe you can speak for this that you may already have it I know that you were the one who originally seeded the 2014 harvest scheme that started regional management and from what I recall it was more or less the 2013 harvest there were some a few changes and I guess what I'm really interested in as we go along here is the composite of everything that has occurred since 2013 so 2014 created I'll call it a de facto target by region and then there were landings in 2014 and then there was a de facto 2015 target by region and landings um, so as we go forward it would be good to be able to trace that when we need to to know where the shortages were um, you know where the excesses were so that we really can have a clear understanding once we find ourselves in a situation we don't want to be that at least we have a um, pretty clear idea of what has occurred region by region and of course state within state and, and I don't think that that's um, difficult unless you tell me it is John that wouldn't be difficult to generate okay thanks John Steve Hines thanks mr. chairman um, John the New Jersey Delaware Bay uh, option under region option 2b would you consider this is going to be several questions because you said something you mentioned something about if even if New Jersey was to harvest at a more normal rate so what's a what's a more normal rate um, we've got an, a number here for a regional harvest target of 490,000 plus fish um, what's a more normal rate and would you consider what happened in 2015 to be anomalous I mean are we setting New Jersey up to greatly exceed this regional uh, this harvest estimate for 2016 good John so New Jersey over the last three years so 20 2012 2013 2014 harvests approximately a million fish um, I don't think anyone expected them to harvest under 500,000 fish for 2015. Um, you know, the stock assessment does say that there's, there's a decline. Uh, I've heard reports from fishermen that the fish stayed offshore in that area, and I think the Maryland and Delaware data also show um, less harvest than we expected. Um, given the decrease in the RHL for 2016 and the and the following year I think that if New Jersey was to harvest a million fish regardless of changes made to Delaware Bay we'd have to you know review the measures in place for the coast did you have another question Steve I mean, what I, I guess I'll just I'll also say that I I don't think that the option and option to be in this addendum and is going to be the cause of an overage. I think the cause of an overage will just be more fish caught or variation in the MRIP estimate or whatever it might be. But I'm not convinced that the allowance of an extra of, of one less inch and with the with the um, reduction in creel limit in Delaware Bay is going to trigger some great response on the harvest end. That's just my opinion, Steve. 
Well, I, I don't think I have a concern about the 17 inches. I'm just more concerned with that only allocating 490,000 to uh, to New Jersey as its own region. Um, I, it just seems like it's uh, setting them up for. I mean, what, we don't know what the we've already talked about what potential consequences. You know, if we if we have a mess, and and I just see a mess coming. Okay, Tom Foti, and we'll go to Lewis. Yeah, mine's a little bit. I was a little concerned about I was getting this Rhode Island report about the particular chart about going to the technical committee and basically asking us to get reviewed. If I remember right, this came before the board and we turned it down, didn't didn't send it. And usually, the way we, we progress when we do something like this is. When Lewis comes with a proposal for North Carolina or one of us, or New Jersey comes with a proposal, we basically get our technical people to put it together, bring it to the board, and if the board is going to approve it, it goes to the, then to the technical committee. So I, it kind of took, it took me a little gas that we were going through this thing that had not come, come for the board first to say whether we would even consider this to send it to the technical committee to be looked at. So I'm kind of lost on how, I have never seen that happen before, so I was trying to, kind of lost on how that worked. And is that the regular precedence, the way, way we do things? Because from what I know, that's not it. Kirby? So uh, Rhode Island uh, representatives came to us and, and uh, well, there's an interest group in Rhode Island that is interested in having this continue, uh, this, this uh, charter boat program. Um, Jason McNamee was interested in getting review by the technical committee on the merits of the program. Um, it was not, uh, I was not under the impression that Rhode Island is considering doing this for 2016 as uh, was indicated that there isn't a set allocation set up for subsector or even at the state level under regional management for allocation. So my understanding was that new or um, that Rhode Island is not interested in pursuing this per se for 2016 but wanted to get feedback from the technical committee on its technical merits. So if Rhode Island has a different opinion on that, uh, uh, feel free for them to speak up. But that's that was my understanding. Mark, uh, I agree with Kirby. The you know, we, we're not looking for this for 216. We were looking for the technical uh, merits uh, and/or warts uh, with the possible consideration of you know, a future date. Thanks, Mark. Lewis, follow Daniel. up on this. Follow up on that question. Follow up. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, but that's not the usual way we do something, especially on a proposal that's been turned down by the board before. If it comes, it comes to the board first, and then the board would recommend it going on. So I'm just trying to make sure we have a procedure, because that's a procedure we've been following for years. So I don't all of a sudden say, how do we go around that procedure and just go directly to the technical committee? We're tasking the technical committee with enough work to be done and to basically add some tags that one of us, even including New Jersey, can walk in and say, well, we'd like you to look at this, whether doing, doing an addendum and doing everything else. I just, you know, it seems like out of the realm, it should come from the board. All right, thanks, Tom. Lewis Daniel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just I've been I've been uh, wrapped around Southern Flounder management for about the last year. For any of you keeping up with what's going on in North Carolina, and and I see some some parallels here that I that I I, I would like to bring up to the board, just for your consideration as you move into these discussions. Um, I've not been as involved in this because it's a jointly managed fishery with the Mid-Atlantic Council and I have staff that, that handle that for me. But one of the points that was made in the public hearing, I think, was a mismatch of the information and the, that what the fishermen are seeing on the water and, and what we're seeing in the stock assessment. And I just one the first my first question would be wouldn't wouldn't some observer program coverage on partner charty boats and log books help really help to get us the the better information that we need in order to in order to dispel some of those mismatches so that that's question one because I think that's a critical need that we're 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 still lagging way behind on the other issue that we've talked about on so several occasions and we're, we seem to be moving down the same path that we always move and I, th I think 
there's time for a change is in these size limits. <clears throat> I think if you look at the stock status, we're overfishing. Um, spawning stock biomass is not looking as good as it could. I think a lot of that, is, and we've got a good recruitment year coming in, which, which seems to make me believe that recruitment is more variable based on environmental conditions rather than a stable spawning stock biomass. And I think one of the reasons why we have probably don't have a stable spawning stock biomass is because our entire harvest is female fish. And, and that's a concern. And we just keep moving in this direction of having 17 and 18 inch size limits. And, and we're destroying our, our spawning stock biomass. And it looks like we're just going to continue to move, move in that direction. North Carolina, we're looking very closely at the catch rates and, and, and how we could save hundreds of thousands of pounds of female biomass by lo lowering our size limit and trying to put some F on the male fish. And we're not, we're, I don't know that we've even had that discussion yet. So I encourage us to, to, to have that discussion with the technical committee. I know some folks think, oh my God, dropping the size limit is, is verboten. You know, but but if your F's on males are zero and your F's on females are resulting in overfishing, you've got a pretty substantive problem. And so, and I can't help but look at the landings for North Carolina, where we've landed about a third of our quota over the last many years. The reason for that is, is because we have a 15-inch size limit, and we don't see fish 15 inches in North Carolina. The stock's not overfished. Right now, we've got overfishing occurring but it's consistently impacted North Carolina over any other state because we just don't simply don't see the fish in the southern end of the range that meet the, the, the size limit that, that's been selected. So we're actually taking action in North Carolina. I'm going to be making some changes to our flounder management plan that's going to protect more summer flounder in North Carolina, not, not harvest more, but protect more. But we will be looking at trying to come up with me methods to reduce our size limit to, to harvest more males. And I encourage the commission and this board to begin looking at a similar approach. Thank you, Lewis. Um, I'll just make a couple quick points. Uh, regarding the disconnect, I think what I, what I heard from the public comment, that disconnect, I think, more applies to uh, black sea bass than it does with flounder. And I don't think there's a person here that doesn't truly believe there is some disconnect to what the science is allowing us to take and what fishermen see on the water. And I hope that through the next assessment, um, we'll find some, there'll be some solution there that, or there'll be some, there'll be something that will help balance that disconnect or at least piece it together a bit. Uh, regarding the, the sex specific issue on flounder, um, there was a presentation given uh, to the joint meeting of the council and, and board by um, Dr. Pat Sullivan, I believe last summer, pro I think it might have been the August meeting. And so there's been some forward movement on factoring in sex specific um, information for the purposes of exactly to, to help the issue that you bring up to try to figure out a mechanism for which we, we can focus harvest not solely on female female summer flounder and the, the idea would be that that information would be factored into the next summer flounder assessment. I'm not sure when that is going to take place but hopefully by that point we'll have that model will be up and running. Thank you. Okay at this point right now I'd like to go to um, I'd like to move on in the agenda get away from questioning uh, or questions and get to the last item under the agenda item five, which is consider the approval of um, the components of addendum 27. So the way we intend to do this, we'll need to take up a couple actions. The first action I'd like to take up would be, um, the, you know, the summer flounder action. We'll then need another action for the black sea bass part of the addendum, and then we'll need a board action um, to finalize the addendum. Um, so we need three specific actions at this time, and I'll look to any board member to put uh, a motion on the table so we can begin that debate. Brandon Muffley. 
Thanks, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion in regards to the summer flounder aspect of the addendum. And I'd like to move to approve option 2B, adaptive regional management for summer flounder under section 3.1. And then option one, no extension beyond 2016 under section 3.1.1. If I can get a second, I'll speak to the motion. Okay, the motion's on the board. I, Dave Simpson is second to that motion. Go ahead, Brandon. <clears throat> Thanks, Mr. Chairman. You know, we've talked about the issue qu quite a bit, and I appreciate the board's willingness to talk about some flexibility. Um, our inflexibility under state by state um, allocations is kind of why we went to a you know regional management in the first place adaptive regional management and I think we need to be flexible and evaluate situations as they come up so that we can get these regions um, aligned as best as we can and I think this approach that we've taken um, allows us to address the two inch size limit in Delaware Bay that had never been in, in existence prior to implementation of regional management we will constrain the bag limit there um, to ensure, you know, to help ensure as best as we can that um, the harvest stays within the constraints that we have. Um, and I don't think, you know, going down this path based on the analysis that the TC has evaluated, even under the assumption of a higher level harvest back to no more normal levers in New Jersey, that this is going to be the issue that causes any great problems going forward. Um, we do it only are putting it up for one year to evaluate how this option plays out for this year, see what the 2016 stock assessment tells us, and then we can reevaluate moving forward. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Brandon. Okay, we have a motion. Is there any further discussion on the motion by the board? Steve Hines. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm all for supporting each other. And I am very much uh, in favor of doing whatever we can to help New Jersey. Um, our Marine Resources Advisory Council for New York State took up this issue in January and, and basically voted to oppose option 2B. Um, and they asked that we, that we oppose it here at the table. I'm, I'm not opposed to it, I, but uh, I do have, I want to share their concerns that the, uh, that the separation of New Jersey into its, out as a separate state uh, could have potential ramifications, not just for New Jersey, but for everybody. And um, we do know that the MRIP, we struggle with these estimates, and by making, you know, breaking up into less precise bits, we're really we're setting ourselves up for getting back to what we were going through with state by state and uh, I have really concerns about this. I'm glad to hear Brendan say that, that he would only have this go through 2016 so we could evaluate it um, and that gives me a, some measure of comfort but I'm still very, very concerned that uh, if New Jersey um, does go back to a normal harvest that uh, we could have some real problems on our hands in 2016. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Rob O'Reilly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I do want to support the motion. I, at first, um, thought that there might be two purposes in the no extension beyond 2016. Um, so I definitely would support it. Uh, I was a proponent of geographical splits in the past. It was very well intentioned but ill-fated in Virginia. Um, I still think it would be something in the future when we have a, again, have a rebuilt stock that would be good to consider, not just in Virginia but other states. I know Maryland has had split geographical uh, areas as well. Um, to me, the important thing here as well is we really do need to get back together on all this. And I know that there's a, um, a shortage of resources, not only at the ASMFC, but also in the states to keep bringing these forward, the addendums forward. But in this case, I think it's going to be necessary for several reasons. And also we do have to pay attention that this might be our first challenge in 2016 since 2009 with a year class that's average or subpar with the 2014 year class 
making its way partly into fisheries by late summer, early fall. So um, for, the, for those reasons, I'll support the motion. Thank you, Rob. Dave Simpson. Thank you. Yeah, I, I support the motion as well. I, I think um, because this is the right thing to do. This is, this is what we should be doing, working together to, to address some of the issues that have developed as we, frankly, as we try to resolve each other's concerns and, and problems. Uh, this started two or three years ago largely over a concern for New York and frankly New Jersey was a big part of the solution to that and uh, um, I have faith that they're they're going to do the best they can to make this work. I was relieved to see that um, the sort of cost for accommodating Delaware Bay New Jersey side is, is not great. It won't be the difference between making this and not. I do have my concerns as everyone does that that a closer return to normal catch for New Jersey could put us over um, but I'll I'll return to my my plea every time we get together that um, especially with the, the prospect of paybacks that are incorporated into federal plans mandated through a federal process that our federal partner do something for conservation on the recreational side for summer flounder I do think we need a, a, an 18-inch minimum size in federal waters to backstop what we're trying to do in uh, a small water body, Upper Delaware Bay, where larger fish very arguably uh, do not, that they do not frequent. Same thing for Chesapeake Bay and other areas. So uh, it's another plea that, that the federal government, if you're serious about staying within harvest limits and paybacks, you need to be a partner in making sure we don't go over and, and set some reasonable rules out in federal waters. Okay, thanks, David. Emerson, Hasbrook. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, back to my 31,000 fish question then. Um, <laughs> so those 31,000 fish for, for option 2B here, for the Delaware Bay option, um, is it, am I correct in understanding that those fish are going to come out of the, the coast-wide allocation the coastwide quota so that every region is going to give up a few fish to come up with that 31,000 or do I have that incorrect no I don't I don't let me let me take a stab at it and then you guys can tell me if I did got it completely wrong the the reason why we're considering this option is because we have some there's a difference between the catch in 2015 as it's projected and and the quota that was set for 2016 and due to the fact that the catch in 2015 was lower than what we anticipated um, I know that I'm not the only one after we set the quota in August and reduced the quota for summer flounder by 25 26 27 percent I know I'm not the only one that went home and started trying to figure out how we were going to do that. But then in the, at the, by December, we were looking at um, liberalizing in some way. And I believe that, that these few extra thousand fish that will be coming from Delaware Bay, the allowance is there because of the catch from 2015. If the catch in 2016 reflects more closely what we had in 2014, we're going to find ourselves working through some process to um, handle that as, as regions on who, the, who essentially does the payback. And it's not my, in my opinion, I don't believe that these few extra thousand fish will be the, are going to make us or break us in, at that point. It, it all depends on, you know, how this next fishery operates and, you know, what we end up with as harvest at the end of the year. Okay. Mark Gibson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I and support the motion as well in a similar spirit that uh, Dave Simpson casted in that this is what we're supposed to be trying to do. We can't give everybody everything that they want, but we can try to give a majority of people some of what they want. Uh, and I think this works towards that. However, I'm very mindful, and I hope the rest of the board is, of uh, some of the things that Lewis Daniel said. And the last assessment update was a remarkable turnabout in our perception of the status of summer flounder. If you look at the graphs of SSB and F, we, we have never rebuilt summer flounder. In fact, we didn't even really get close to the rebuilding target, the current rebuilding target. Uh, we got over the threshold, we didn't 
get to the uh, rebuilding target. And in every year except one, which I think was two years ago, the stock was subject to overfishing. Um, <clears throat> we have recruitment events that look big in the beginning, at first hand, and then poof, they vaporize and uh, you know, get moderated down. It's almost like New England Council deja vu. We think we're on the verge of a success story, and poof, uh, the disappearing fish, and we're in, we're in a lot of trouble. So very mindful of those, and I, I look forward to the next um, benchmark assessment. Um, but we, we need to realize that all is not well with, with a summer flounder. We need to be careful about what we're doing. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Mark. Any other questions? Roy Miller. It's not a question, Mr. Chair. It's a comment. May I? Absolutely. I have misspoke. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I'm going to vote in favor of the proposed motion. And my reasoning is the New Jersey delegation um, approached the Delaware delegation to discuss a potential compromise for 2016. Not everyone may be aware of the process that went on. Uh, in my opinion, I think that they went about it correctly and made a good faith effort to put forth a proposal uh, that, in my view, is at least worth trying for, for one year. So I'm, I have some comfort over the fact that Brandon proposed this only for one year. Um, I have some concerns about the difficulty of enforcement and uh, some concerns, obviously, if we were overshoot the coastwide quota. But for one year, I, I think it's worth a try. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Roy. OK, seeing no additional comments. I'm sorry, Nicola, please. Uh, I can also support this motion. Um, it's consistent with the board's objectives for regional management. Um, I also appreciate the, the no extension beyond 2016. And while I recognize the, the burden that these uh, addenda put on staff on a every year basis, um, if we want to do something other than coastwide or conservation equivalency, for 2017, um, it gives the board the option to incorporate those discussions that we plan to have uh, this year about uh, what happens in the event of a region, uh, an R overage of the RHL. Thank you. Thanks, Nicola. Try this one more time. Third time's a charm. Seeing no additional comments, I'd like to go to the uh, public for anyone in the audience who would like to provide um, any comment regarding the motion. Brian? There's a mic at the end of the table over here, and if you could just state your name. And Brian, also before you begin, um, I know that you may have comment on this on this uh, black sea bass yeah. portion of the amendment or the addendum too. Feel free to just go into all of that, and we can include that as part of the record. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you all for allowing me to speak today. I'm Brian Laughlin. I'm uh, Congressman Frank Pallone's uh, deputy chief of staff. Um, and he's asked me to be here today to speak because he's on the House floor voting, so he was unable to be here. Um, he issued, or he wrote a letter um, a couple weeks ago, um, and it's, I believe, in your packets, um, but he asked me to come to read from that letter, so I'll get started. Um, I write today regarding the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission Draft Addendum 27 to the Summer Flounder, Scup, and Sea Bass Fishery Management Plan. This addendum proposes actions relating to two important fisheries in New Jersey, summer flounder and sea bass. Recreational fishing directed at summer flounder and sea bass is a critical component of the state's economy. My district has thousands of private anglers and attracts individual anglers from all over the nation. These anglers support local small businesses and drive the coastal economy of my home state. It is critical for New Jersey to receive fair treatment in the development of restrictions placed on key recreational species. With respect to summer flounder, I request the Commission adapt Regional Option 2B, New Jersey-Delaware Bay Proposed Region. The option will enable New Jersey to become its own region and allow anglers to have a more equitable size limit within the Delaware Bay area. As the Commission considers the time frame for summer flounder measures, I request the Commission adopt Option 1, which would hold this addendum expires at the end of 2016. Further, I support a less restrictive quota than the proposed 23% reduction than it is included in the draft addendum for recreational sea bass harvest. 
there continues to be a troubling lack of confidence among fishermen and many fisheries managers in the data that guide stock assessments. As Congress considers reauthorization of the Magnuson-Stevens Fishery Conservation and Management Act, the reliability of data collection remains one of our primary concerns. We must ensure that inaccurate and out-of-date science is not guiding decisions to needlessly restrict fisheries. Recreational anglers in New Jersey and along the Atlantic coast deserve fair quotas based on sound science. According to NOAA Fisheries, commercial and recreational fishing supported approximately 1.7 million jobs in 2012. New Jersey's, uh, New Jersey's, sorry, New Jersey relies greatly upon the critical industry. I appreciate your attention to this important matter. Frank Pallone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other public comment on the motion? Okay, seeing none, we're going to bring it back to the board. Any additional comments before we call the vote? Need 30 seconds to caucus. Okay. Okay. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your, your hand. That's 12 in favor. All those opposed? Any abstentions? No votes? Okay, seeing none, motion carries. Moving on to black sea bass. Tom, I'm going to hold off it right now. At this Very quickly. One of the reasons we're talking about numbers going down is, and we're looking at what's happening in the trend. When we looked at the statistics and for, from 2007 to 2014, we were down 8 million trips in the Mid-Atlantic region, and New Jersey was down 2 million trips. I would like the technical committee to please bring in the next meeting they could as how many trips are we are we continually on that downward trend on number of trips in the last as we have been going since 2007 because one of my feelings is we've had a lot less trips and a lot less boats we've also been down over 50,000 boats in New Jersey since 2007 and it seems to be a continuous slide so that's one of the reasons maybe we're getting less trips so because 40 percent of our director trips were summer flounder Okay, thanks, Tom. We'll put that on the list for an, um, a future technical committee report. Okay, moving on to the options that are the uh, alternative we need to take up for black sea bass. I'd like to move to look or look at the board for uh, anyone who's willing to make a motion to get this discussion started. Dave Simpson. Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. I move to approve option two, ad hoc regional measures for black sea bass under section 3.2 and time frame option two, one year extension through 2017 under section 3.2.1 in addendum 27. Max, are you working, can you, it's option two. Yeah. Okay, we have a motion by David Simpson, a second by Steve Hines. Any discussion on the motion? Adam Nowalski. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I'll cut right to the chase, and I'm going to move to amend that, that it just be for one year, or for just no extension, option one, no extension. And if I can get a second, I'll speak further. Thank you. Okay, let me get that on the board, Adam, before I ask for a second. So Adam just made a motion to amend to... We have a seconder of the first motion with Steve Hines. Yes, the motion by Adam was to amend sec under section 3.2, option one. And the, however that language reads after option one, no extension beyond 2016. Is that your motion, Adam? Yes, it is. Thank okay. you. Is there a second to the motion to amend? 
Second to the motion to amend, Rob, Rob O'Reilly. Adam, do you want to speak to the, your justification for the motion? Yes, thank you very much. So putting aside for a moment the issues with the 23% reduction, which I could spend an extended period of time debating here today, putting that aside for a moment, though, we know that there has been a tremendous amount of work that's been put forth largely with the help of the technical committee from this board in changing the black sea bass quota. If not for that work and the 20% increase in quota for 2016, we'd be looking at something even more drastic here before us today. That work on quota is not done. It continues to be an ongoing process, and I believe that we need to continue to have the flexibility and we need to have the responsibility to work on this issue. We have before us today in the northern region states that were under their target by up to 30 percent this past year. And unfortunately, the reported data from one state, a 70 percent increase over the previous year, is what's driving this. This is the variability of the data that's driving this. We need to continue to work as a board. We need to continue to work with our technical committee, with our partners at the Mid-Atlantic Council to find a better way to do this, to tell our fishermen that we had a 20 percent increase in quota, but we have to change our regulations to account for a 23 percent reduction. We all go home with egg on our face when we pass measures like that. And the need to continue to do so, if we sit here today and just say, OK, we're going to leave this process in place for two years, I think that the people doing the work, including ourselves, we know we can do better. We're going to continue to do better. And this sends the message to our constituents that we're committed to that. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. I'll just, uh, for a point of clarification, I want to make sure that I'm understanding from staff correctly the difference between the options. And so it's my understanding that the main, the, the first motion, which includes option two, it establishes the, um, the ad hoc regional management for 2016 and gives the board the option to just extend those same conditions for one additional year. The board could choose at a later time than today to not extend those conditions for one additional year. The amended motion simply eliminates that option later down the road. And it will essentially, it, it, in my, in the way I understand this, we will be, if we want to continue regional management, we'll need to initiate a new amendment at that, or a new uh, addendum at that time and do the whole process again from start to end without that simple extension It'll just be a longer term process. So I just want to make sure I'm clear that everyone's clear about the differences between the two. Is that good on that, Kirby? Yeah, yeah the, a new addendum is needed if you go with option, time frame option one, and you want to do something different than coastwide measures in 2017. Okay, thank you. Any addition, any other uh, comments or discussion on the amended motion? Steve Hines. I just want to speak to what Adam said about the uh, the data, because frankly, you know, he did mention that one state was was is driving all this, and I, I agree that uh, I'm glad he said data, not not harvest, because I find our number for 2015 to be a little bit not believable. All right, it's way out of whack with everybody else. So. Although I still support the original motion, I just wanted to, to support Adam's contention with the data. Thank you, Steve. Any other comments? Okay, seeing none, I'll provide another opportunity for any member of the public. Anyone, anyone like to speak on the motion? Okay, seeing none. 
bring it back to the t to the board and take 30 seconds to caucus Just for the board's clarity on this motion, because New Hampshire and Maine have a declared interest in black sea bass, they will be voting with the board on this matter. Thanks. Okay, sorry about that. Is the board ready for the question? All those in favor of the motion to amend, please raise your hand. That's five. All those opposed, same sign. Seven opposed. Any abstentions? Two abstentions, the null votes. No null, zero null votes. Motion fails. Back to the main motion. Do we need any further discussion on the main motion? Tom Foti. After attending the public hearing in New Jersey, and we had we had 50 percent of all the people that attend the public hearing. A lot of them they were not there really so much on summer flounder, the black sea bass. And I, before I did that, I attended the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council, and every place, all the shows I've gone to since, everybody just says, no, hell no. And so, I'm, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to vote against this motion because there's no, the stock assessment says we could be fishing at a higher quota. The, uh, the Mid Atlantic Council, because of the way they set up the rules and everything, have put us on a quota that we are doomed to failure. Even without the 23% reduction, even if we were just at what the quota was, we're doomed to failure anyway because they've underestimated the number of fish. They're building uh, our catch figures on an underestimation of the stock, and we're catching more fish than, because the stock is much bigger. So for that reason, I'm going to not support this. I cannot support this motion because I've been directed by a whole bunch of people, including the two senators and the congressman who I was on a podium with on this Sunday. So that's the way I'm. The reason I'm going to vote against this. Hey, thanks, Tom. Any other comments? Okay, seeing none. And need time to caucus. Okay. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and call the question. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. It's 13 in favor. Those opposed? Like sign, one, null votes, any abstentions, zero, zero, motion carries. Okay, that concludes our, um, the action items we needed to take for the black sea bass portion of the addendum. What I'm now looking for is someone on the board to put forth, to put forth a motion to finalize and, and move the addendum forward to, be, to final.
Yes. Uh, did you want a motion to approve uh, as adjusted uh, today? Absolutely, yes. Okay, I'll make that motion to approve this addendum uh, as uh, modified, directed today, however you want. That sounds good. Okay, the motion by Bill Adler, move to approve addendum 27 as modified today. Do I have a second? David Simpson. Any discussion on the motion? Point of order, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think you said 27. Yeah, it is 27. It says 26, but okay. we are on addendum 27. Thank you. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? Tom Foti. Yeah. Um, this is tear in New Jersey because we can't we don't want to vote for black sea bass yet we want to vote for summer flounder so uh, in, the, in the spirit of cooperation I'm going to have to support the, the motion <laughs> all right thanks Tom okay we, this is because this is final action we're going to need to take a roll call vote and since New Jersey is going to support I'm kind of looking for is there any objection to the motion? Seeing no objection, motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, we are pressing up against a, some time difficulty here today. Um, we have another meeting after this one. So what I'm going to do is just is ask Kirby to very quickly um, go through what he had planned for um, agenda item six and agenda item seven, and we'll just try to limit any, com any discussion or questions on those items. I just wanted to make sure that you guys had the information that they plan to present, um, but we will be selecting a, a vice chair before we leave. Um, that is, that's one thing we're doing. Thanks. Go ahead, Kirby. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. We'll go through this very quickly. Uh, for, we're going to go through SCUP, and then we're going to go through CBAS. So for SCUP, uh, the board approved the federal uh, measures in December of 2015. For 2016, they are nine inch minimum size, 50 fish possession limit and open season from January 1 to December 31st. The board moved to continue the regional approach in state waters for 2016 and finalized state measures at the winter meeting. There are no proposals uh, for new management measures in 2016. Um, So just this is a background in terms of what the harvest was in 2015. Seventy percent of the harvest um, of the RHL was achieved. The northern region could liberalize by 28 percent. But as I mentioned, there's been no interest from the states or indicated by the states to change. The, the states of Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York will maintain status quo measures. 10-inch minimum size, 30 fish possession limit, and a season, open season of May 1 through December 31st with a single bonus season wave for the four higher vessels of 45 fish possession limit. Um, the states of New Jersey through North Carolina will set their measures consistent with um, the federal measures set in December. Because states are staying status quo, there is no need for a motion on uh, SCUP management measures, recreational management measures in 2016. If you have any questions, let me know. Okay, thanks, Kirby. Any questions? All right, seeing none, go ahead, Kirby. Move on to the next agenda item. All right, so for Black Sea Bass, I'm going to go through it quickly, but switch it over to John to walk through the technical committee's comments on the sea bass proposals. So in December of 2015, the board and council voted to continue uh, the ad hoc regional approach stipulated in, um, in a, uh, to include it in addendum 27. Um, the regions uh, have two sets of uh, proposals. There's the northern region uh, proposals that John is going to walk through, and then the southern uh, states agreed to set their measures consistent with the federal regulations. Um, again, it's a if-then approach that is applied under that condition. So in 2015, total harvest uh, is estimated to be about 3.64 million pounds for black sea bass. The RHL is 2.3 million pounds, so there's about a, um, there's an overage of uh, 
and there's a need to take a 23% reduction. Um, the 2016 RHL is going to be 2.82 million uh, pounds, um, and 97% of the harvest uh, in 2015 was uh, accounted for through the northern region, which is the states of Massachusetts through New Jersey. I'll turn it over to John now to go through the technical committee uh, review. So as usual, the technical committee is seeking board approval of methodologies um, and general principles um, for future consideration of wave six data, which will be available mid-February, and um, public input into final measures adopted by each state. So, I'm sorry. So use of minimum size increases in harvest reductions. Uh, a number of states have submitted proposals with minimum size increases. Um, when you do that, what you're doing is you're increasing the average fish size and the average fish weight um, of those harvested, which, so which means the full reduction is not necessarily being realized, and the TC will address that uh, in a methodology sometime in 2016 so that for the future we can consider that properly. Uh, so. Um, Success uh, in meeting our harvest reductions uh, varies year to year and from state to state. Uh, but under the current construct, the entire region is subject to the same uniform reduction. Um, so if, if states are unhappy with this arrangement, then uh, some kind of di a different management scheme will be necessary. Uh, regulatory complexity continues to be a problem. We have uh, different possession limits and seeds and lengths depending on mode and wave within a given state. Uh, this results in calculation and evaluation uh, difficulties. Methods across states have not yet been standardized, and um, some TC members objected to liberalizing aspects of measures during a reduction. So for example, increasing a minimum size limit and regaining 30 days to your season. Uh, under ad hoc regional management, um, we're not required, but states are uh, encouraged to develop consistent regulations. Uh, measures from state to state lack any sense of consistency. And um, uh, one TC member suggested that future liberalizations, when that happens, be utilized to create greater regional consistency. Uh, as you all know, current management is heavily impaired by catch limits. Repeated year-to-year -year reductions in the face of uh, incredible availability has eroded the stability, credibility, and compliance of uh, the fisheries. Uh, there is a 26 benchmark stock assessment to be peer reviewed for December 2016. Um, post review, new regional alignments may be appropriate. Um, currently, the new northern region goes from Massachusetts through New Jersey, uh, and I think um, New Jersey noted that uh, in their proposal that in the event that the stock assessment includes spatial structure, that their placement in the northern region be reconsidered. Um, so on to the state-by-state state proposals. Massachusetts, uh, in 2015, had a 14-inch minimum size limit, eight fish, and they fished from late in May to the end of August. Their um, proposals consider using season length and bag limit to achieve the reduction. I'm not going to dwell on any individual table for the sake of time. Uh, Rhode Island's 2015 regulations were 14-inch minimum size, one fish for July and August, and then seven fish from September through December. Uh, they also use season length and bag limit to achieve their reduction. An additional proposal from Rhode Island uh, considered a mode split. Um, in this case, uh, so the TC has, has opposed mode splits in the past due to data quality issues, regulatory complexity, and uh, the future difficulties with calculating and evaluating such proposals. Regardless, mode splits have occurred in Connecticut and Massachusetts. The for higher um, portion of the black sea bass fishery is relatively small in Rhode Island, uh, and the TC member from Rhode Island calculated a greater than 23% reduction to account for some of this uncertainty. Um, however, the mode split suggested is optional, meaning uh, for higher vessels can opt in, which uh, produces additional issues with MRIP data, 
potentially biasing your estimates and confounding the data. Connecticut, uh, in 2015, had a 14-inch minimum size and a mode split. Their private mode has three fish from June through August and then five fish from September through December. Their party and charter um, program had eight fish from late June through the end of uh, December 31st. Connecticut wishes to continue their, um, their mode split. However, it is not an optional program, so some of that data confounding issues um, do not exist. Uh, there is additional reporting requirements for, for this program. Uh, I should say that Rhode Island also um, implied that they'd also um, impose additional reporting um, comp programs uh, for their mode split. Connecticut will use, uh, their proposal includes minimum size limit changes, season length changes, and possession limit changes. Um, New York had a 14-inch minimum size, eight fish, uh, and mid-July to the end of December 31st. Uh, they will be using season length changes and possession limit changes to achieve the reduction, including uh, multiple possession limits. So um, possession limits differing by wave. New Jersey's recreational 2015 fishery included a 12 and a half inch minimum of size and um, possession limits that varied from 15 fish to two fish. They fished uh, for the last half of wave three, um, the month of July, and then from the end of October through December 31st. They, their proposals include changes to the minimum size limit, season length, and bag limit to achieve the necessary reduction. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Dave Simpson. Yep, just one clarification that Connecticut's party charter or letter of authorization program, it, it, it is optional. Uh, so they have, to, um, they have to opt in. That obligates them to provide the logbook reports, which is one of the things we really wanted. And uh, it does appear that the logbook number is uh, a fair bit higher than the MRIP estimate for that mode, and that's one of the things we wanted to learn uh, about it. But I just want to make that clarification. Thanks, David. Nicola Mazur. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, question for John. Is it uh, appropriate to characterize the TC's review of the Rhode Island and Connecticut proposals about the mode within a mode option that um, Dave just referenced um, as the TC not endorsing them? because of the implications for MREP and ability to estimate, uh, project regulatory adjustments in future years? John. That is correct. Um, a mode split, especially when you have uh, potentially different regulations within the same mode, um, create difficulties uh, in terms of uh, potential bias in the estimates because um, once one portion of that mode will say some charter boats might be fishing under different conditions during uh, a season that is otherwise closed to the rest of the charter fleet, but the way effort and is um, estimated, those catches are potentially applied to all charter vessels, for example. So the data is confounded um, and the estimate potentially biased. And then in future years when you want to try to utilize the intercept data to generate um, regulations, it's problematic. Thanks, John. David? Uh, I'm embarrassed. Um, I have to correct my correction. Um, Greg, Greg is right. This past year, it was mandated. When we changed the season, we, we mandated uh, the ch party and charter boats, what you, the different season prompted that. Party and charter boats started three weeks later this year than the um, private sector fishery. Uh, so I apologize for the confusion. I'm surprised you were confused over all that up there. That was, uh, it's, quite a, it's quite a challenge to try to figure out, and it, it speaks to the point of how confusing things can, can often get when, when we're trying to maximize or make, make the best use of the, uh, of the resource we're managing. I do need a board action uh, here. What I, what I do need is a, um, an approval of the state-specific proposals based on the TC recommendation. And in addition to that, 
We also need the board approval um, of the methodologies that are used in calculating these um, these regulations in the just in case there's changes that happen as a result of the wave six data, which will be upon us shortly. Adam Nowalski. So we saw a couple of points of information in that last presentation. TC concerns about increase in size, not necessarily gaining the full reduction required. Generally, the increase in size is used to offset some change in season. We've historically heard that the best way to constrain the harvest, again, according to the data by the TC, is through changes in the number of days, reducing it. And we've also heard today that as these regulations become more restrictive, it's been promoting more noncompliance. So the more days open that we have with lower bag limits is promoting noncompliance with that issue. So I'm prepared to make a motion to approve the methodologies as presented today. However, no state may have more open days in any mode in 2016 than in 2015. Okay, thank you, Adam. Let's get that on the board. Would it help if I repeated that at this point, or? I think we have it. Um, it must be up on the ceiling. Tony's looking on the ceiling. Yes, I just also included the by mode because we have a number of different modes in a couple of different states at this point. I was on the, of the uh, understanding that due to lack of support by the TC on the modes, on the mode specific options, that that wouldn't be part of what the TC was recommending, is that? Well, I believe we're already doing it in Massachusetts and Connecticut, and it looked like the Rhode Island proposal was approved. John. So at one time, Massachusetts did have a mode split. They removed it. Um, Rhode Island has a proposal for a mode split this year, uh, and Connecticut has an ongoing mode split. So again, I, I would just perfect that with no state may have more open days in any mode in 2016 than in 2015. Okay, thanks, that. thanks for that, Adam. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second for the motion? Pat Augustine seconds the motion. Discussion on the motion. David Simpson. I'm opposed to the motion because I, I don't think there's uh, good evidence to support Adam's suggestion that, that um, um, limiting days is more effective than bag limit. I think, I think I could make a very good argument that especially especially in the party charter mode, um, limiting the bag drastically limits their um, incentive to book trips and sell trips and, and so forth. And, and it's even true in, in the recreational fishery. When we're at three fish in July and August, um, they, they're, not, they're not targeting those fish. It's a bycatch allowance. And, um, you know, I think all of us do this balancing act, right, of uh, even when the little state of Connecticut, the, the variation in the fishery from east to west is fairly profound. Uh, so um, where folks in the central sound and western sound see fish very early in the season, in the east they do not. And so last year was a compromise. We added three weeks to the season 
to, for the first time in two or three years, give the folks in the central and western sound a, a little opportunity to take sea bass. So uh, I'm opposed to putting any additional restrictions on, on states as they develop options. Okay, we had a comment in opposition. I'm going to, given the time, I'm going to go back and forth. Do we have anyone that would like to speak in support of the motion? Okay, seeing none, I'd like to call the question. Why don't we take 30 seconds to caucus? Okay, is the board ready for the question? All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. One, all those opposed? That's eight opposed. Any abstentions? Four, null votes. Seeing none, the motion fails for lack of a majority. <laughs> okay, back to the board. Nicola Meserve. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would make a motion to approve the Black Sea Bass proposals and methodologies for use in 2016 management as recommended by the Technical Committee, with the exception of the um, mode within a mode splitting. Um, by that, I mean the the Connecticut and Rhode Island options or other states um, that have uh, optional program for their four hire fleets. If I get a second, I'll speak to the motion. Okay, Nicola, let's get that, let's get that up in the way that you'd want to see it and then I'll ask for a second. Mode within a mode, uh, or the, the optional for hire programs. How's that read? With the exception of the mode within a mode splitting within the four higher fisheries. Do you want fisheries up there or programs okay? Let's put fisheries up fisheries, there. Fisheries, thank you. Okay, do I have a second for the motion on the board? Okay, seeing no second, the motion fails for lack of a second. Back to the board for additional consideration on the issue. Mark Gibson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would <coughs> move simply the first part of the motion, move to approve the Black Sea Bass proposals and methodologies for use in 216 management as recommended by the Technical Committee. Okay, we have a motion by Mark Gibson. Is there a second? Steve Hines. Steve Hines was a second. Any discussion on the motion? Yes, Pat. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, clarification, would it not be appropriate to do it in one motion because the other part is the state recommendations that uh, the TC reviewed? 
the state proposals and TC recommendations. Isn't that what we're trying to accomplish? I think everything is in here. It says the black sea bass proposals and methodologies okay. I for 2016. The state would be in there, but that's fine. I think got it. It's the whole package. Any additional comments? Okay. Is the board ready for the question? You need time to caucus? Okay, not seeing any. Let's go ahead and call the call the question. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. It's 11. All those opposed, same sign. It's one. Any abstentions? Null votes? Seeing none, motion carries. Thank you. Okay. We have one very quick item on the agenda. Um, Kirby's going to provide, he told me it would take a minute, so let's, let's see what he can do here. Um, just a quick update on the Black Sea Bass and Summer Flounder amendments, and then we'll, I'll be looking to someone on the board to nominate um, or provide nominations for the vice chair. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As I said, I'll go through this very quickly. In August of 2015, the board and council agreed to initiate a scoping process for the draft SCUP amendment before the end of the year. In October of 2015, the council discussed tabling the SCUP amendment process and to move forward with a new Black Sea Bass amendment. And in December of 2015, the board and council agreed to initiate a draft amendment for Black Sea Bass and to effectively table the SCUP amendment, or the addenda, um, yeah, amendment. Uh, the board expressed interest in addressing Black Sea Bass ahead of SCUP due to some of the current challenges. Um, these include the 2016 benchmark stock assessment, overages and harvest limits um, in, in over the, the recent years, commercial landings accountability, and regional approaches to uh, recreational management. So the next steps, and these are loosely um, set forward right now. We do not have an official timetable, but uh, between council and commission staff, we're working on the following. So the summer flounder amendment, the FMAT, uh, would convene over the spring and summer to begin development of management alternatives to be included in the draft uh, amendment and those draft amendment uh, alternatives would be included, or those draft alternatives would be presented to the board and council at the August uh, 2016 uh, joint meeting for feedback. For Black Sea Bass, um, the draft amendment would proceed with a draft scoping document that would be developed over the spring and summer of 2016, and the board would consider that draft document for public comment at that joint August 2016 meeting. Following that meeting, we would move to have um, a public comment period and scoping uh, hearings um, in the fall of 2016. So I'll take any questions if there are at this point. Thank you. Any questions for Kirby? Okay, seeing none, thanks for the presentation, Kirby, and I'm sure there will be a lot, lot more follow-up um, throughout this year on, the, on those two amendments. All right, the last item on the agenda is for the election of a vice chair. Steve Hines. Mr. Chairman, I nominate Bob Ballou from the Ocean State for Vice Chairman of the Summer Flounder Scup and Black Sea Bass Board. Okay, we have a motion for Bob Ballou. Second. You can't second that, Pat. David Simpson seconds. Pat. You don't want to make the motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, move that uh, the board cast one vote. On behalf of Bob Ballou, create the new vice chairman of this board. Okay, thanks, Pat. Is the board ready for the... Is there any opposition to having Bob serve as our vice chair on this board? Seeing none, the motion is approved. And this is an absolutely classic example of why you should not leave the table and go somewhere else when your name could get called. So, now looking forward to working with Bob. Are there any items to come under uh, to the board for under new business? Okay. Motion to adjourn by Bill Adler. Oh, I'm sorry, before, yes, Brandon. 
Uh, sorry, Mr. Chairman, not that I want to hold this up, but I don't, do we need to go back and revisit the discussion we had earlier about um, revisiting overages and how we address those types of issues going forward, or we, we're just under the assumption we're going to try to do something going forward on that? Yeah, it, I had planned to talk about it now, but since we talked about it already, I think what, I'd, what I'll do is I'll work with staff to try to get something planned for a discussion at, the, at our next meeting in the spring, and we'll move forward from there. Okay, I have the motion to adjourn. We are adjourned. See you all later. Thank you. ACCSP will... Um